Spanish omelet known as tortilla in Spain, or maybe tortilla de patatas, tortilla española. Tortilla just means little cake. Traditionally, it's just eggs and potatoes and maybe onions. What's particular about it is the way that you put them together. It's not as tricky as a French omelet, but it's a little tricky. Some things can go wrong. I'm going to show you what I understand to be the traditional way of making this. Then I'll show you what you could call a slightly modernized method of making it. Then we'll go crazy and get creative with the flavors while still using the basic Spanish omelet method. Start with the veggies, one big onion or a couple of smaller ones. Purists might not even use the onion, but I think the onion makes it. Cut them thin in whatever shape. I do quarter moons. Then about a pound of waxy potatoes, 450 grams or so. Peel them if you want to. I think the skins of waxy varieties taste good and they're nutritious. With big potatoes, you might cut them into quarters before slicing them, but with little potatoes like these, I'll just slice them into whole rounds. Thin but not paper thin. If they're too thin, they'll break apart before they even get into the omelet. Omelet. That might seem like a huge amount of stuff for an omelet, but the potatoes are going to shrink in half, the onions will shrink to almost nothing, and the filling to egg ratio with a Spanish omelet is about one to one. Traditional way of doing this is to pre fry the fillings in olive oil, fully submerged in oil, shallow, deep frying. I see no reason to drop the onions into hot oil. You could splash yourself. The onions are going to cook slowly so we can bring the heat in after we put them in safely. Medium heat on my stove, but every stove is different. You might need it higher on a gas stove. We're trying to gently fry these until they go sweet. The goal is to caramelize the onions, so you don't want to see anything browning yet. Once I've given the onions a five-minute head start, I'll put in the potatoes, and these I will gently lift in with a spoon a few at a time. Number one, so that I don't splash boiling oil on myself. Number two, so that I don't overflow my pan via displacement. You can see none other than Marco Pierre White doing just that while making a Spanish omelet in one of his Nora Stock Cube videos. Some people do this frying step in an entirely different vessel, in a tall pot. I don't think it's necessary to get another thing dirty, as long as we're more cautious about it than Marco. Once the potatoes are in, it'll take another 10 or 15 minutes of gentle frying, depending on how thin you cut your potatoes. Stir it every now and then to make sure things are cooking evenly, but while you're waiting, you can crack your eggs into a big mixing bowl. For this much veg, I'd say 6 to 8 eggs, depending on how big they are. This is going to feed at least 4 people. Give those a good beating before you put in the fillings. Some traditional recipes say don't ever let anything brown. Some say get a little browning right at the end, and I'm in that camp. It's done when everything has a little bit of color and you can see some potatoes just starting to break apart. Those onions got 20 minutes total cooking time, so they should now be very sweet, which to me is the entire charm of a Spanish omelet. Now we gotta strain this. You could simply lift everything out with a slotted spoon, but we need to get the oil out of the pan anyway, so I've got a sieve over a heat-proof jug. You're not gonna have a free hand to hold the sieve, so make sure that the sieve sits securely over your vessel all by itself. There's our leftover oil. Here's our piping hot fried vegetables, and they have to go directly into the eggs. Stir immediately and aggressively. This is key to Spanish omelet. You're using the heat from the fillings to start the eggs cooking. I'll stir it for a couple of minutes, just like if I was stirring hot cream into egg yolks for a custard. If you don't stir, the egg in direct contact with the fillings will curdle prematurely. Now salt. For this much, I would do like three quarters to one teaspoon of salt. You could take my word for it, or you could taste. The eggs are still pretty raw, so there's some possibility of foodborne illness. Make your own risk-to-reward calculations. All right, my nonstick pan is still on medium heat. Could you make this in a well-seasoned cast iron pan? I never have successfully. It sticks hopelessly every time. I'm sure it's possible. The Spanish omelet predates Teflon. If you're a real cast iron cowboy, go for it. But a dish like this is the whole reason I keep a Teflon pan around. Once the mix is in, I'll immediately turn my heat down to low. You gotta let this cook really gently to get the interior at least two-thirds of the way cooked before we flip it. If the heat is too high, the bottom will burn while you wait. I'm doing a pretty thin tortilla here, and even then it takes me four or five minutes of cooking before I can flip it. If you go to the Wikipedia page for Spanish omelet, you can see how thick some people do these. I can't imagine how long that takes. Some people transfer these to the oven. I think that defeats the entire point of the technique. If you want to bother heating up your oven, just broil the top and call it a frittata. Frittatas are way easier. Okay, so when you shake the pan and you can see that it's like two-thirds or three-quarters of the way cooked inside, you can go around the edge and make sure nothing is stuck, and then you put a plate over the pan, then you flip the whole assembly. Ideally, your plate is at least an inch wider than your pan. Mine isn't, which is why I got some leakage there. Pan goes back on the heat, and then you just slide the omelet back in. I like to crank the heat back up to medium. We don't have to cook this for as long on this side, and I want some nice color. At this point, the omelet is solid enough that you can actually 
lift it up and have a peek without breaking it. That looks good. Now a fresh clean plate goes on top again and we turn it out one more time. This allows the hotter side to steam out before we eat it. And I like this very well rested. In a tapas restaurant, they might even serve it lukewarm. The taste of that is really sweet, surprisingly sweet. And the texture is pillowy, like a big cushy mattress of egg, much like the big cushy mattress of mattress that I got from the sponsor of this video, Helix Sleep, whom I'll now briefly thank. If you go to helixsleep.com, you can take a little quiz. You tell them your basic size and shape and that of anyone you might be sleeping next to regularly. You tell them how you two usually sleep. I'm a stomach sleeper. You tell them if you like it soft or firm, if you have lots of back pain, and then they match you with a mattress for your and your partner's needs. I got the moonlight. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company, and they mean that literally. Your mattress comes in a box. How is this possible? Check it out. It's under extreme vacuum compression. Listen as I break the seal. That's awesome. Within a few minutes, your mattress has totally inflated. It's a real full-size mattress that your buddy didn't have to help you haul up the stairs, and it's so comfortable. It's this kind of perfect middle ground between bouncy spring mattresses and squishy foam mattresses. We love it. And you can get yours delivered free within the U.S. You'll get a 100-night sleep trial and a 10-year warranty. Do us both a favor and click my link in the description. You'll save up to $200 on your Helix Sleep mattress and get two free pillows. Link is in the description. Thank you, Helix. Now, this right here is my main problem with the traditional Spanish omelet recipe, all that used oil. In a Spanish household, they might cook three tortillas a week, so they're going to reuse this oil. I am not. So here's what I do instead. Just a normal coating of a nice olive oil in my pan. In go my two medium-sized onions over medium heat. And when you caramelize onions in just a little fat, you have to stir them almost constantly. If you don't, individual pieces or parts of pieces would be burned by the time the rest was caramelized. They've had their five minute head start. Now in goes my pound of sliced potatoes. Again, I'll stir almost constantly, just taking a quick break to break my half dozen eggs into my mixing bowl. Caramelizing everything this way does involve about 20 minutes of near constant stirring. But to me, it's worth it to not have to strain out the fry oil and find some appropriate way to reuse it. If it seems like you maybe gave your onions a little too long of a head start, like they're getting too brown before the potatoes have cooked soft, just pour in a little bit of water. This is a really common technique when caramelizing onions, if you have some pieces that are looking a little crispy and threatening to burn. Sauteing the veg rather than frying it gives you more flexibility and control in this respect. Don't worry, all that water will boil out before we put this into the eggs. The potatoes are starting to break apart, they're cooked. So in the hot fillings go, straight into my eggs, and I'll stir them for a few minutes to get both the fillings and their heat distributed evenly throughout. A teaspoon of kosher salt. The reason I specify kosher is not because the grain size matters. It doesn't. You can use whatever salt you want. The salt is going to dissolve. I specify because different grain sizes measure differently. Big grains like kosher occupy a greater volume of space. A teaspoon of kosher salt is equal to about three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt by weight. Adjust for whatever kind of salt you're using. Why not just weigh the salt? Because kitchen scales tend to be super inaccurate when it comes to differences of just a few grains. Remember, I reduced my heat to low or medium low right after I put the eggs in, and after four or five minutes, it's at least two thirds of the way cooked through. Time to flip, and don't flip it right over the burner. I was doing that to keep everything in the light and in the focal plane, but yeah, you're gonna get some drippage, especially if your plate isn't quite big enough for the job. The fillings underneath tend to bunch up a bit when you slide the omelet back in. You can even them out by just swishing the omelet around in the pan. That works very well. I'm on medium heat again because the second side takes less time, and I want some some nice color on it like that. Let it cool thoroughly. And the texture of this is really reminiscent of a potato gratin. It has that satisfying al dente feel as you bite through the layers. You wouldn't get that if you sliced the potatoes paper thin. And I can perceive zero difference in texture or taste compared to the traditional version where we fried the fillings. So now let's be totally unbound by tradition and get creative. I'm going to slice up one medium onion and the rest of my onion will be green onions. I've already taken off the decaying outer layers. I'm just slicing the the white parts thin, and I'll caramelize those with the rest. The green parts I'll slice diagonally to make them pretty, and I'll put those in at the last second, hence keeping them separate. 
I'm going to use a sweet potato this time. I'm still trying to like them. They're pretty and they're far better for you. It's big, so I've cut it into quarters before slicing thin. Sweet potato with caramelized onions is going to be pretty sweet, so let's balance that with some fresh red chilies. These are mild ones, so I'll slice them seeds and all, and I'll chop up a little bit of rosemary. I'll caramelize my onions as before, stirring almost constantly in a little olive oil over medium heat. After a five-minute head start, in go my potato slices. Stir, stir, stir. When they seem about halfway cooked, I'll put my sliced chilies in. When the potatoes are just starting to break, I'll put in my rosemary and some spice. This is harissa, the great traditional spice blend of North Africa. Tons of cultural exchange between North Africa and Spain, obviously. I'll let that fry for a minute before stirring hot into my half dozen beaten eggs. Stir for a couple minutes to distribute the heat in with only a half teaspoon of salt this time because I'm going to grate in some of this, manchego, the iconic firm cheese of Spain. It's quite salty like Parmesan, hence less salt. In go my green onion tops at the last second to keep them green and firm. Stir those in. Back into the pan on medium heat. Back it down to low. When it's mostly cooked through, I'll turn it out onto the plate. Whoops, that one got a little bit toasty, but nobody has to know because we're flipping this one more time after just a couple of minutes back up on medium heat. Beautiful. Let it cool, slice her up, and check this out. Rosemary flowers. Totally edible. Tastes like rosemary. I would never spend money for something this precious, but they're growing on my plant outside right now. I'm either going to eat them or let them rot off, so I'll eat them. They're super pretty. So there you go. There's the Spanish omelet technique. Keep it super traditional or, you know, don't. <laughs> 